Good evening and beyond the new, my fond, fair friends, family, and subscribers. This is your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge, here to bring you... Well, what if a monster hunter was sent to the world of Ruby? Now where we last left off, Ignatius. Well, he was... Unlocked his semblance and he turned into an Odo Garen, what you see before you right here. The teams converged together upon Eugene's findings and went to his last known and went to the last known location after reviewing the video footage. And with a bit of help from Eugene's, well, brilliance. And Jean's sheer power. They were able to force the gate open that sent, that took our fawn fair friend Igni away. As well as a herd of Grimm. Now, this is going to be where the fun truly begins. As they came across, well, someone they never expected. Liliana Reinhardt. Yes, Igni's sister. In addition to that, they came up with a crazy and dramatic plan to save their friend. Split up. <laughs> because of course. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? You just got a... Now, multi-tonned Ignatius bent on rage and destruction and has the knowledge of a professional hunter. What could possibly go wrong splitting up the party now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm evil. But no, this will have a fine resolution. Don't you worry, don't you fret. I'm not that evil. Mostly. Now. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this starting zone. As we'll go start off with potatoes the non the current group that's not gonna be fighting and just trying to talk the one led by Liliana at the moment as she well gets back to the base everyone's wondering wait what's going on why is she coming she left alone why is she coming back with so many people She's a solo hunter, right? What's going on? As the whispers begin to ensue as the strangers walk forth with her. And they're all going, what's up? Shush, and keep with me. As the Admiral goes, wait, how was the hunt with the Zenogre? Fine, dead, talk with me, now. Wait, what? As basically she drags him along and, well, towards the table. We have a big development. Ignatius is alive. What? Wait, what do you mean alive? I know this is gonna sound crazy. I know this is gonna sound stupid. I know this is gonna sound beyond ridiculous. But he's alive. He's alive. What has he been doing for six months? As he begins to look at the other girls. Don't tell me. No. Oh, I... Then what has going on? You know the Odo Garen that came... You know the Odo Garen that's been com that came around a few days ago? Along with those black skulled, those skulled creatures that have the black, that are all black, with red eyes. Yes, that Odo Garen is Igni. We need to get you to the medical bay. Shush and listen. There's been proof. They have proof. They know it's Igni. Wait, you're saying that Igni? The human hunter, your brother, 
transformed into an Odo Garen. Yes. Let's get you some rest. It's it's all right. The, the hot springs are great. We'll help you unwind. Obviously, the stress is... She grabs him by the neck and slams him down in his chair. Listen, I know how crazy this sounds. I know how stupid this sounds. I know how idiotic this sounds. But it is true. Trust me. Listen, I know you want your brother to be alive, but there's no way, as then, well... Thor pops up on the table. And... what the... <sighs> what does the meat... what does the... <sighs> what is it, Thor? Quit being a pest to go somewhere else. <sighs> Thor, get! Mouster is alive. <clears throat> Wait, what? What? As everyone's kind of shocked by this. Wait, you, you can talk? No, of course I can talk. I just choose not to 90% of the time. I've known you for over six... I've known you since we were kids. And you never talked. I didn't feel like it. You didn't feel like it. No. You you didn't feel like it. You didn't feel like talking. No. Uh -uh. Why? No. Uh -uh. Don't give me the silent treatment. Don't talk, you little bastard. As she picks him up and starts shaking him back and forth. I didn't want to talk. As the Admiral grabs her and set, uh, stop! As Thor drops the table. Pfft. What do you mean? He's alive. Master never died. He fell. Yes, he fell, but Palicos have special relationships with their masters. We can tell when they are in distress and when they are dying. And we can tell when they're dead. Ignatius never died. Meowster just went somewhere else. I looked everywhere for Meowster. But Meowster just disappeared. Yeah. So, me waited. You, you waited? Yes. You're saying that you knew he would come back? Yes. How did you know he would come back? Master is master. Master always comes back home. I'm going to murder you. You mean you knew the entire time he was alive? Yes. Then why didn't you tell me? Because you were moving on and you didn't, and I figured, if he doesn't come back, err. Besides, that would involve talking. I hate talking. Especially to people. And other pelicos. Wait, does Ignatius know you can talk? No. So... Uh, as the other... As the... The girls and Ren are all going like... Uh... Are you saying... It's common for cats to talk. Yes! And these are cats, they're palicos, but they they talk. Usually, yes, it's usually it's some sort of weird well, they usually had a lot of their a mixture of their own language in, but yes, they talk. Thor has not talked since the entire time we knew him, and he's talking now. Now as Liliana is still clearly pissed off. You didn't even talk to Ray! Meow. What? Meow. Oh, you little bastard, you ain't getting away with that. <laughs> As he just starts taking off. 
and goes grabs onto the chain that's pull going straight up towards well what well, that connects to the lifts that bring up supplies from one floor of the base to another floor as he just kind of pats his rear looking at her and takes up and rides up he says i am going to murder you later <laughs> As he just as both the Admiral and Lilian are just going uh, uh, what just happened? I think we just got told off by a palico, but I'm not quite sure. Okay, considering how strange they, stranger day it has been already, um, what exactly are you asking? There's a team of hunters going to hunt, well, Igni down. We need to stop them, as before they could even finish the sentence, an alarm is rang as four hunters get sent straight in. Several of them with deep gash wounds across their chest, backs, and sides. As the fourth one stumbling along, his armor is barely held together because of a few teeth marks. As they're all going, what happened? What's going on? The, o the Odo Garen, it knew what we were planning. What do you mean? We set up. We set up a trap, one standard raw meat and three paralysis meat set up on, set up in between a pitfall, two pitfall traps. It works, either they get attracted to the meat and chow down and they, well, become paralyzed, that gives us time to strike, or they immediately know something's up and try and circumvent around, landing in one of the traps. However, this one, it, it was like it was tracking us the entire time. It was sniffing. It was, it played us. It played you. How so? It grabbed the meat and when we weren't looking, jumped up in the air. And just like the ebony Odogaren, it shot it back out at us. Granted, not with any draconic energy, thank God. Thank the Twilight Star. And thank the Sapphire Star, you moron. Thank the Sapphire Star. But... E it still hurt and distracted us from its main approach, jumping over the other two traps and straight at us. We tried to fight back as hard as we could, but it's like it could predict our movements. Anytime I made any actions with my gun lance, it would be on the other side of me, slamming into me with a shoulder check. Anytime Neiman over there would set up a powerful attack with his switch axe, he would just jump straight over it and flip him with his tail. Charlie tried going in with the dual swords, and she got beat, and she just got picked up by his maw and tossed around like a rag doll. And I don't even want to know, I don't even want to tell you what happened to Gerald, as they kind of look down and see, well, footprint, a big footprint on the back of Gerald's, well, indented on Gerald's back. Like, what happened? He tried charging in with his lance. He just jumped up and landed on him. You mean foot first? No, he belly flopped on him. And then to add insult to injury, it just stepped on him and raked him to the side like he was dirt. I swear I heard, the, I saw the thing chuckling like it was laughing at us. Laughing? Yes. It was a miracle we got away alive. But the thing is, it could have killed us. 
Yes, I understand. It's very... No! It let us go. It... It let you go. It let us go. It had more than ample opportunity to kill us. More than ample time and strength. <clears throat> As he says, grabbing his side. The thing is smart. Too smart. What's going on? You didn't prepare us for this. This is nowhere near our level. As he collapses onto the ground. Get him to the medical bay now. You see, I told you, she says. Liliana says, that is Igni. No doubt about it. What's your proof? Igni is a smart ass. Your point? What would he always do whenever a hunter would, tr whenever one of his a train, whenever one of the people who would try and train with him would try and sneak up on him or attack him from behind? What was one of his favorite things to do? Huh? You remember it. He would either run up and jump off of something or use the weapon he had to jump into the air, slam down, in, slam down onto them, pick them up and throw them away. And then he would just laugh about it. Especially when he was younger, he would do that all the time. It was one of his favorite things. Basically, oh, you thought you snuck up on me. Have that. Uh, huh. I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. Let you need to stop sending people after him. There's already some a group there going after him right now that are trying to they're going there to try and calm him down. A group. I didn't request any there isn't a request for it right now. Well, technically there is, but they didn't take this request. They They're doing it for him. Because they're his friends. And right now I need you to call off the request before someone else tries to get in and kill him. Because either they're going to die or they're going to kill one of the best hunters to ever live. Are you sure this is reversible? If it is, Igni, can he ever truly come back to being human? Oh, most definitely. As we as Weiss chimes in. Oh, and how so? Well, the thing that's going on is a semblance, as she kind of shows off hers a bit, make... What the hell? You see, where we're from, we have these innate powers called a semblance. From what we can tell, they're similar... What you call the hunter's instinct and what we call aura are connected on the same level. They are the same thing equivalently. However, where you all fight monsters and use their bone, use their arms and armor for, well, their hides and bones to make your arms and armor to increase your prowess and defense, we had to learn different means due to our creatures acting the way they do. Your creatures, the Grim. The black-haired beasts with skull masks and red eyes that you were all talking about. Grim. That's what those things are? Ignatius was helping us. We got trapped in a tunnel. He got blocked off on one side and we were on the other. He called on our team. He told all of his team as well as ours to get out while we had the chance. And he sacrificed himself, fending them off so they wouldn't come through the tunnel. That does sound a lot like him, but what is this? That's his semblance. His semblance. But he doesn't have... He never had the chance. He was never pushed too far. Or rather, I should say, he was never pushed too far for someone else. He wasn't fighting for himself. Semblances activate and react to different me to different stimuli, different emotions. 
whenever he's hunting, he usually hunts for himself, for his own survival. But there he was fighting for other people. I'm sure something along those lines caused him to feel or become like this. He should be able to revert back to normal. Of course, I've never heard of a semblance being activated for that long. So, it could be 50-50. As now, we're cutting to Igni. Oh, you thought I was going to cut to uh, team? The rest of team knee, so to speak? No, 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 no. We're cutting to Igni. As he is, well, scrunching and digging around the... <laughs> Well, I'll tell you that in a second. Pardon me one moment. Got some... Okay, you got me. I looked it up. Elder's Recess. Now, why is he there? Simple. He's thinking of one thing and one thing only right now. Vengeance. He is wanting one thing to end his pain. To end the thing that caused him so much pain. Because right now, Ignatius, he is, he is seeing all sorts of red. Or, <laughs> as... He's sniffing around, and oh, does he find the thing he's looking for as a big, bad, powerful, very large, and very spiked individual walks forth, the Nergigante. The Nergigante, the elder dragon of self-sacrifice, of extreme power and wrath. This is what he's been looking for. This is what he's been wanting to fight. He's been tracking down the thing that sent him flying down that hole oh so many months ago and this Nergigante it's very confused because it smells something familiar yet off about this Odo Garin as this strange creature begins to bow up and start taking its offensive stance at the ner at him be like wait this is weird, it thinks. Because he's used to seeing standard Odo Garens, and they all are terrified. They run from this creature. They run from him in fear and terror. But this one, it's eyeballing him. It's showing him the evil eye. It's showing him that it's not going to back down till one of them is dead. As he just moves back and forth, watching him, glaring at him. As the Nergigante kind of huffs, slams down its paws and roars, trying to intimidate it. But all it does is cause a chain roar from the Odo Garin as it slams down its paws and curls up, lunch, lunging itself at him for a surprise attack. The Nergigante recoils and sends down its wing to try and intercept. But as it does, the, well, I guess you could call him the Igni Odo Garin or Igni Garin? Odo Ni? Odonatius? Odonatius! 
You know what? Yes, that might work. Odonacious. <laughs> As the Odonacious proceeds to, instead of slamming into it, bite down on the wing as it rips its, as it puts its claws dead in its webbing and rends the flesh, tearing massive holes into the sides of it as the Nergigante writhes and screams in pain, sent flinging him off. <sighs> and he may have tumbled and he may have rolled, but Odonatius stands up licks the blood off his lips and looks him dead in the eyes again as he does the standard predatorial pacing. The Nergigante looking at this creature, realizing where he bit, there's no blood, there's no br damage. His armor protected him, but his wing he ain't flying anytime soon. He's wanting a, he's actually wanting a fight. And this, honestly, somewhat intimidates the Nergigante. Not by much, not even by a fraction. But it's curious about why this creature would want to willingly throw its life away against a bigger predator. Because the Nergigante dwarfs this Odo Garen. It dwarfs Odonatius by a large margin. But he gives zero dams. Because this, this some bitch made his, made his life, well, very confused. And it embarrassed him. And so, it must die. Yes, that, that's, that's the logic behind it. As they go for another clash, the Nergigante, not wasting any time this go-round, lunging forward and going to slam it down with its claws. But Odonatius spirals and spins around using its momentum, from, using the weight of its tail and its f momentum as it digs its claws into the earth. To basically Tokyo drift around it and start slashing at its heels, its tails. He's not letting loose. He's not letting go. He is gonna keep on biting the ever-loving crap out of this Nergigante. He will kill it with bug bites if he has to. As the Nergigante gets really annoyed and starts going to slash and slash and bash trying to smash it with its horns, cut it with its claws, send down spikes to flood it aplenty. But Odonatius isn't having any of it, jumping from the walls, running from the sides, using the walls as leverage to jump and dash across, shr shredding and slashing the sc spines off its back, and then repeating the process, before the spines can even regrow and slashing the bear back. Oh, how irritating it must feel to be this Nergigante, knowing that a lesser predator is owning you. But Odonatius isn't just any lesser predator, as he is pure pissed off. As he goes again and again, striking at the head, the tail, until finally the Nergigante gets lucky and pin and uses its claws to pin him to the ground as they dig into his flesh. At this moment, it, <laughs> Odonatius begins to feel as if this is the end. As the Nergigante draws its hands upwards, beginning to ready to slash it down, smash it down into his skull. As his eyes widen, when all of a sudden you can hear a very loud and very imposing kaboom from a double barrel shotgun as 
Galley has entered the Galen has entered the combat. He's bringing up his axe, his axe mace, and just letting loose the twin barrels, going for a reload as he floats along his shield. <laughs> as it as the Nergigante is going, what? As he feels the sharp pain of ice fl overflowing on his back. As it turns around, tossing Odonatius to the side. As he does another spin out. However, this time he doesn't get up nearly as quickly as, well... Pyra lets loose a few shots with her sniper rifle right at the Nergigante's face. This only pissing it off as it targets her and goes for a charge. However, this does not go unnoticed. This doesn't go unnoticed at all. Because, oof, do Natalia let loose. She pin uses that critical sight of hers, pinpoints that target, and she lets loose that shot, and it goes straight into that eye. The unprotected soft spot right into the Nergigante, and boy is it pissed. It recoils, it falls down, it's bleeding, it is roaring, but it ain't done yet, because right when it thinks it's getting back up, Odonatius charges in and bites at the soft underbelly and claws and rends and sinks its teeth into its flesh, not wanting to let it up, not wanting to let it go, realizing what it's doing. He knows who these people are and he's gonna protect them as he keeps it pinned down, as the others start laying on the fire. Eugene brings out the shotgun, and he starts letting rip right into the soft underbelly, getting even right under Odonatius. Just boom, 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 boom. And when he's out of ammo, does he bother to reload? Nah, he just brings out the dual axes and starts getting into the blood, the thick of it. Oh, but the Nergigante ain't giving up yet. Even as Pyra throws her javelin straight into it, embedding itself along the other spines. Oh. This, <laughs> this creature isn't giving up by a long shot. It ain't the Elder Dragon of self-sacrifice for nothing. It isn't the Ruiner for nothing. Pardon me one moment. It is Nergigante, and it just gets fed up. It tosses them to the side as it spins over. Flinging Odonatius, and well as a as well as well Eugene, as the rest of the party begin to well gather together. <laughs> as oh boy, things are about to get rough for them. Things are about to get rough indeed because Nergigante's had enough. He's growing the black spikes, and they're ready to rip as it gets ready to jump into the sky. But then it realizes its wing is still torn. The adrenaline from the fight has caused it to forget the damage it sustained just moments ago as it gets into the air and then curves off curse. Oh, man. And as it lets loose, the spikes fly. And almost, and quite a few of them head straight for the team. But then, right as they cower, right as they're getting ready for the impact, right as they're ready to be dead, they look up and see a red scaled behemoth. A red scaled Odo Garen coughing up a lot of blood as it falls 
onto its belly and begins to shrink and revert as Ignatius is on left. However, when they examine him, the places where those spikes impacted aren't there. And it's almost as if nothing happened to his physical body whatsoever. That the creature was a manifestation of his inner aura, Eugene thinks, but only for a slight moment before hearing the Nergigante roar again. Why? Because it, that's, this son of a bitch ain't, that ain't gone. He is still there and he is still pissed. Yeah, kind of a bad time to be thinking about someone else whenever your life is still on the line. And cue the combat again. It charges in, bloodied, beaten, battered, but not dead, as it's ready to roll. Oh, Lord. The Nergigante begins to fight savagely, not even caring about how many openings it leaves. But at this point, Pyra pulls off a gambit. She runs straight towards the Nergigante as everyone's distracting it. Even Jean gets in on the action, jumping over and landing on its back, stabbing into it with his short wit. Well, long sword, actually. Stabbing into it with his long sword over and over, causing it to raise its head in agony as Pyra does a duck and slide right to where her spear was directly underneath it as she activates her semblance and just causes it to spin and pull. Pardon me? Sorry about that, neighbors. <clears throat> Causing it to spin and pull as well. <laughs> she goes, it goes right straight through. Like a drill straight through a hard rock. What will break first? The bit? Or the substance? And in this case, the beaten, battered, near broken Nergigante gives up the du gives up, well, the ghost. As Pyra's spear goes straight through its chest and out the other side. As it falls directly on top of her. Everyone gets worried and goes to lift it up. As they're able to move it over to the side and see she's fine. The spear impacted just below her arm, and her aura kept her safe while she was being crushed underneath the massive tonnage of this creature she's never seen before. As, well, once they are able to finally breathe for a second, they see a very very missed sight. Ignatius's face, as he stands up, pops his back after a good stretch, and just goes, What happened? And where are. Wait a minute. This is the Elder's Recess. How am I here? I'm back home. But wait, how are you here? Is this a dream? That would explain why I'm naked. What's going on? As, yes, the girls kind of realize he is indeed naked. Why is he naked? Well, for several reasons. One of which, his armor was already mostly broken by the time it was he was able to change. Like, that transformation takes a lot of strain and strenuous effort. And, well, if your armor ain't ready to support it, pff, off it goes. And boy, oh boy, good luck transforming back without that catalyst. <laughs> uh, 
is basically he just says, Oh, I feel like I haven't eaten in days. Oh. Oh. As well. Eugene, as well as Gallon, run up to him and Eugene pulls out from his bag a safety blanket, wraps it around and says, It's all right, partner. It's all right. We'll get you home. Boy, do we have a story to tell you. Uh, maybe later. Right now I'm hurting like hell. As Jean runs up and says, Here, I got you, partner. And places his hand upon his head and just sends a sheer massive amount of energy into him. Causing his aura to skyrocket as he goes, Holy! Wow! When did you learn... Your training methods are harsh and brutal as hell, but they work. Well, it's good to see I have friends that are willing to suck, willing to face down that even a Nergi Gante for me. That's what that thing is. Yep. Elder Dragon. Elder Dragon. Yep. Elder Dragons are tough. They control nature in some way, shape, or form. Control nature? That thing just had brute strength and shot out spines. That's the thing about him. He's different from every other elder dragon because he eats elder dragons. He? Well, I rather should say it eats elder dragons. Uh, did some research on them. Turns out they reproduce asexually. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. All these things do is take in enough biomass that they get from killing enough elder dragons and then leave behind a bunch of spines in the ground and, well, fill it with enough biomass. Next thing you know, a few months later, or a few years later, another Nergigante is born. And this place is crawling with biomass. So... There's a reason why we've had a small infestation of them. Oh. <clears throat> As he begins to move around. Oh, man, why do I feel like I've been drug over 17 miles of bad road? Speaking of bad road, what about that tunnel? The last thing I remember is I nearly died. Again. I'm making too much of a habit of that. As everyone just starts kind of chuckling and laughing as well. <laughs> Natalia gets up right behind him while no one's looking. And with a straight, no nonsense, no F's given, kicks him right square in the arse. He goes, yeah, son of a... Ow, oh, what the hell? Ah, uh, Natty, why'd you? Pff, ow! I told you I'd kick your ass. Okay, duly noted. <clears throat> okay, remind me never to make her angry again. She holds a grudge for a long time and isn't afraid to kick a man while he's down. Uh, you you didn't know that? Like me, kind of. I didn't think she'd ever kick me. <laughs> As they all start kind of walking back to well. the base camp and then calling in a transit home if you will and how they call it in well simple it's technically called in for them considering they were all the expedition team was already on its way to go see what was going on and then they come back seeing an alive ignatius a dead nergigante and a whole bunch of and a whole bunch of other people and at that point, I think I'll end it off, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you're ready for some real fun. Because <laughs> they believe me, this is just the beginning. Bye-bye for now.